Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the Village Law SEQFC preview show. My name is Darren Lutton, and this is the Women's Show. Thank you for watching in such great numbers last week. It was very encouraging to uh, to get such a great response for our first episode. Hopefully, you're all sticking with us for future episodes. We've got guests coming out of the woodwork during the show, so it's going to be great. We've got we've got a double act tonight. We've got Kelly McLean and Caps. It's Smith, isn't it? Not Smythe, Smith? Smythe. Smythe. <laughs> Curses. Cat Smythe from the lakes. How are we going? Good, thank you. Good, thanks. All right. So uh, at the moment, they've just finished training, so they're warm. By the end of the show, we expect their colour and their face to turn blue. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of blue, out of Ipswich, we've got Trent, Trent, Trent and Gregson. The great of of the uh, Western Pride MPLW team. Good evening, Trent. Hey, mate. How's it going? Very well. Mate, you guys, really impressive start to the season. You must be really happy with how it's going. Mate, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely stoked with the ladies. They've, uh, they've definitely strung some good games together, but, you know, we're about to hit that, hit that hard, those hard couple of games. So not getting too excited yet, but definitely happy with what we've been doing. Yeah, good stuff. All right, we'll come to that a little bit later. We've also got Corey Robbins from the, yep. the Santa Fe Wanderers who's going to be joining us at, at some point this evening. So with that in mind, we're going to start with Capital League One in the Football of Brisbane competition and work our way up to the MPLW. So let's have a look at results from the weekend. So Albany Creek had a good 2-0 win, two win over Pine Hills. North Brisbane, 2-0 over Macrobat. Caboolture, nil. Ipswich Knights, 4. Ipswich Knights, of course, the top team in the league. Turinga <coughs> had a good 3-0 win over Southside Eagles. And to Wong, Cass Old Club had a, a 4-0 win over North Star. Cass, do you still uh, keep an eye on to Wong's results? Um, I do on and off. Um, I certainly, uh, a lot of the girls that I coached when I was there have actually moved on and uh, returned to Pine Hills. Um, but there is a couple of the ladies that are there and a couple that have returned, in fact. Um, so I think um, I, I've watched actually their game recently against uh, the Hawks. Um, they're both their reserve grade and I, I think they're res the reserves and the top side. Um, and it was actually it was actually a really good game to watch, to be fair. Um, so I think they've definitely still got talent there and a lot of younger girls. Um, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how they how they sort of come out at the end of the season, I think. Um, there's definitely potential there to be really, really competitive and have a good, strong result. We were just talking uh, before we started recording about your time there at Tawong and you said the thing that you brought to the club was a culture. And it's great. Sometimes we see cult, uh, coaches move clubs and then the, the program just disappears completely. Great to see Tawong have been able to keep things together. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've got they've got a really good team there and they've definitely got... Um, I guess the right people there in terms of uh, the women's the women's uh, involvement there with the with the right people at a committee level there. Um, so uh, yeah, I think uh, there was no way that they were going to sort of let it dissipate again. Um, and yeah, definitely good to see that it's still really positive. All right, four rounds in, Ipswich Knights, as we mentioned, are on top of the league, undefeated. Three Rovers in second, Albany Creek in third, Pine Hills in fourth. Now, this weekend, my understanding is, is that the Elaine Watson Cup group stage will be happening. That's probably Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm not sure if they're playing catch-up games. Not 100% on this. It's the, the vagaries of game day that uh, does sort of immediately show you where things are. We do have Elaine Watson Cup games next week. Albany Creek taking on Mount North Brisbane up against Southside Eagles. Kath, while we've got you there, Mount Kavat, what did you make of them when you, when you watched them? Um, look, I think they're, um, I definitely think there was some really nice passage of play with, with, um, with the Hawks there. Um, together a little bit, uh, um, which I think is probably, um, you can definitely see that. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think they're a pretty tidy club um, in terms of, sorry, tidy team. And I think, um, I think they'll be pretty competitive from what I saw with them playing Twong. Just to take them a little bit of time to get things going, do you think? Yeah, possibly. Um, I think, I mean, these guys started, did they start earlier than us or was it? No, after, around, that same time. around about the same time, yeah. 
I think um, I think there's there's quite a bit of strength to I believe in Capital League at the moment in terms of the teams that are in there. Um, you know, with the likes of Pine Hills, Caboolture, like all of that. I think that I think there's some really strong teams in there. So I'm not real sure where they'll end up, but as a unit, in terms of what I saw against Tuong, they did fairly well. Yeah, it's quite strange looking at that uh, that competition. You, you, you see your Albany Creeks, you see your Pine Hills, and Turinga, all all in that competition. You think surely they're they're big enough clubs to be able to to get out, and move up the ladder. Maybe that'll happen for them in the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think um, like I, I'm just having a look now, and I mean That's it's all nice. it's all pretty cl- all pretty close from one through to six, to be honest. So well, yeah. Yeah, let's move on now and have a look at the Brisbane Women's Premier League. A uh, couple of matches. It's a, it's a make-up weekend this weekend and uh, you guys are taking on Rabina, is that correct? Correct, yes. 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 Now, uh, and the other game is Karina up against UQ. Now, I'll just have a quick look at the ladder as Corey Robbins joins us. Let's let him in. Um Rabina, mid-table, Lakes, haven't got a win yet. How's it going? Uh, are signs positive? Do you think you're going to be able to pull this out? Kelly, I'll let you answer that question first. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Look, um, we are a brand new team this season. Um, a lot of our girls from the last two years um, have – some of the girls have gone to NPL clubs, some have stopped playing – um, and a number of them are playing on our City One team this year. Um, so it's a brand new team that's been put together by um, Kath and Emma Taylor. Um, so we have, across our squad, we actually have eight girls that are under the age of 16, um, which is what Kath and myself spoke about when Kath first came in, was um, building from, from scratch again um, and looking to bring through some young girls um, for the future of... of the top level of women's football at the lakes. Um, so by no means do I think it will be an easy game at the weekend. I've watched Rabina, their keeper is outstanding. Um, I watched her a few weeks ago and the saves she was pulling off were, were superb. Um, so I think it'll be a very um, difficult game. Um, but, you know, uh, we said from the start, we're not here just to make up numbers. Um, and we're definitely seeing progression as the weeks go by. So is it just, um, I'm sure it's just going to be one club down. Is that right? Sorry, say that again. One club relegated this season. Is that how it's worked? Um, apparently so, but, um, you know, there's only eight in the league as there is. Um, we've all seen the restructure that Football Queensland's brought in with the uh, 17 teams going to MPL, splitting into an FQPL. So, um, I don't know. Let, let, let's wait and see if that's definitely what happens at the end of the season or not. Um, I'd be interested to see how, how they restructure the Premier League next season because eight teams um, isn't isn't great to be honest it really needs to be a 10 team league yeah it's just I guess it's just how it is with the numbers at the moment isn't it? just the number of clubs that, that have the competition so yes perhaps some, some of those capital league teams could uh, could uh, help fill out those numbers um, just trying to get to last weekend's results here we go Go no, that's the week before. There we go. Yes, yeah, so Broadbeach United had a, a 3 0 win over XUFC and Tangry Point Rovers a 6 1 victory over Annerley. Uh, what have you guys made of, of some of those teams? Broadbeach looking looking good to uh, oh, without a doubt. Yeah, they're a um, Broadbeach, Broadbeach are definitely a very tidy team. Uh, they pass the ball extremely well. They're, they're physical um, and uh, they're tasked very well in terms of ball movement, passing, speed, all of that. Um, they're very well drilled and that's evident in obviously the results. Um, I mean, in where they're sitting on the ladder. They've got some very experienced players in that team as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and that's, and that's, that's like exactly like uh, Kangaroo Point as well. Uh, very well, t- like very well drilled. Uh, passing is on point. Some of those girls have played together for years. Um, so it's it's hard to compete, I guess, in that sense with a brand new team who's still learning to gel um, against a team of people that have played football for years and have played football together for, for years as well. 
Definitely. All right. And yes, I was going to mention Kangaroo Point Rovers. They're sitting there in second place. Uh, there's a lot of ground to make up on Broad Beach. It's, can you see Broad Beach going through this season undefeated? Or, or do you think someone, someone will um, knock it over at some point? I believe someone will knock them off their perch at one point. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly who, but I feel like it might be an upset. Um, it won't be. It'll be an unexpected win. Um, and, I'm put it out there. I'm, I reckon a little Gold Coast derby. I reckon Rabina might be the ones to beat them. Yeah. There you go. You never All know. Right. Interesting stuff. And with your club and the Elaine Watson Cup, are you involved in it at a later stage? Um, I don't believe we are this season, no. Okay. Yeah, very strange. Well, we may strange have, happenings yeah. with, with round robin games happening with the yeah. With yeah. It's, the, yeah, it's all cup. a bit odd with the with the um cup this season. So um I'm at this stage I'm actually unsure. I'm not very sure what we're doing. If we are in it, we might be drawn at a later stage. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. Mm. All right, I might have to ask some questions on that. <laughs> all right, ladies, thank you very much for your participation there. Let's switch our attentions now to the MPLW. Corey Robbins is, is snuck in uh, at some point while we were chatting there. Corey, good evening. You're, of course, coach of the Sunny Coast Wanderers. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Pretty good. You must be pleased with your, your start to the season that uh, you're getting good results in. Yeah, I think um, we've had a fairly tough start as well. You know, we've had Lions, uh, Gold Coast, Brisbane City is quite a good side as well. Um, you know, they're all in the top four. You know, we really haven't played anyone that's um, been sitting below us in the table. Um, so we've had a really tough start. So, you know, we've got points from more games than we've lost. So that's always always a bonus. Have you played Western Pride yet? Uh, no, I think we've got uh, Thunder this week and then we play Western Pride, I think might be the week after. Right. Yeah, we've got Trent- time. There we go. We've Two got weeks. Western Pride coach Trent Gregson with us as well there, Corey. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we, haven't, uh, we haven't faced each other yet. So, Trent, uh, you're in sixth place at the moment uh, with only six rounds played. There's a few teams that have played uh, a seven around you. Uh, three wins, two draws and a loss. This is great stuff from... Um, for, for a side that's just coming back into the competition, as are the Wanderers. Yeah, um, it, it's been a lot of work. I'm not going to lie. Um, but they've just gelled. They're, they're honestly so close. And it's just made some, such a big impact having a team that's so close together. And we, we do have very talented players in the team. And it's just all come together. Abby's come back from injury. We didn't have Abby for the first two rounds of the season. And she, she hasn't missed a beat since she's been back. So, yeah, like I said, we've, we've got, got a long way to go, but I'm very happy with how we've gone so far. Convincing uh, Meg McGilligan to, to join your team, how important was, uh, was that signing to expanding the, the – filling the depth in your squad? Massive, massive. It was, it was um, showing that, you know, we're not, not here to make up numbers this year, that we, we – we are here to have a crack. Um, Meg's exceptional. She's, she's obviously she's our captain this year. And, um, you know, I've, I've coached for a little while now and she's one of the best captains I've had. She is down here involved with the 14s. You know, she's starting to get involved with the 16s. She's always done 12s training. She, she's just a great club person. That's, that's the kind of people we wanted. And, you know, we, are, we nailed it on the head with that signing, I think. You, of course, were the, the head coach at Coomera last season. What's been the, the differences that you've noticed from the BWPL to the MPLW? Uh, very steep learning curve, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, it's a lot of things. You, you, every week, there's, there's no such thing as an easy game. You know, there's no such thing as, oh, you know, we're playing um, bottom of the table this week. It's, it's going to be a pushover because it's not all these ladies that play in this league are quality players. You know, if you go into any game unprepared, if you haven't watched game tape, if you, know, you haven't trained properly that week, you're going to get done. And that, that, It's simple. It's just I've had to lift my standards as a coach. I've had to, you know, a lot more preparation goes into my games and stuff like that, which, you know, I expected and you know, it's, it's helped me grow as a coach as well. So, yeah, no, it's – you've got to do a lot more work. If you don't do the work, you're not going to succeed. Corey, I'm going to throw a similar question your way. You, of course, uh, were bringing the Wanderers back into the competition after a, a year away. 
you've recruited locally, getting lots of um, cherry picking the, the best players from all the local clubs, and then you went and got Beck Horsey as well, and, and Samara Christmas coming back. So you've had a pretty similar experience to to Trent at the Pride. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, main thing was uh, making sure that we do bring in local girls. There's a lot of local talent. Um, you know, even you know Beck Horsey lives on the Sunshine Coast now. So as much as a big player she is, she's still local for us. Um, and, you know, talented player adds a lot of experience as well, which is fantastic. Same with um, Samara. You know, she's been in the MPLW for many years with Fire, um, Lions last year, and then obviously um, with Wanderers again now. So there's a lot of experience coming in. But, they're, you know, they're all still local girls, which is what we kind of want. Yes, it's a, it's a portal that's proved quite effective across a lot of competitions around the league, including the Brisbane Roar. You know, the, the Roar have finally started signing some local players as well. So it's a good formula and uh, obviously reaping dividends for a lot of clubs. Now let's get to last weekend's results. Morton Bay United had a one-all draw with Mitchelton. Southwest Queensland Thunder nil, Eastern Suburbs four. Lions had that massive twelve nil win over Peninsula Power. We'll come to uh, Peninsula Power shortly. Palabar four one victory over QAS. Gold Coast United two, Brisbane City nil. Massive result there for GCU. South United and the Wanderers had a one all draw, and Olympic one, Western Pride two. Corey one all draw over South United. Uh, tell us about that game. Yeah, I mean, it was a fairly even game throughout, you know. Um, I've rewatched the footage and stuff like that, gone through all the, you know, game plays and moments. But it was one of those games, either side had chances to win it. Um, a one all draw is probably fair. Um, you know, we scored a, a cracking goal uh, to, to open play. And then, um, unfortunately, we had a slip in the box. Ball's fallen to Rika Tana, who's just pure class. And she slotted at home. And second half was... You know, either side had, could have finished it. Both had really good chances. So just one of those games kind of come down to if one was going to take a chance and take all three points, which neither side did. So draw is probably a fair result. And how did the players uh, find playing on the synthetic, spit, synthetic pitch? <laughs> horrible on the calves, horrible. <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, it's, you, you got no excuse for, um, you know, you can't say, oh, I bobbled and that's why my touch wasn't great and, you know, there's, there's no hiding on synthetic pitch. It's as simple as that. You've got to have a good touch. You've got to have good spatial awareness. You know, you have to have the quality there. There's no forgiveness in it at all. But it is, uh, it's definitely tougher on the legs. And, um, you know, they, they use their own field advantage. And I would I'd do the same. So, Yeah, from what I've seen, you, you see a lot of players' eyes light up. They all want to play that killer ball straight away rather than just control possession. And the game speeds up. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it makes it hard. Like, it was a frantic game for 90 minutes, you know. Um, it really didn't slow up at all. And you could see on both sides just the that physical toll on the players towards the end of the game. But, yeah, it, it makes for an entertaining match of football at the end of the day. So, you can't complain too much. For sure. Trent, you had a massive win over Olympic on the weekend. Tell us about that. Yeah, mate. I was uh, pretty happy with that result. I'm not going to lie. It's... Uh, Going there, you know, they, they're obviously new to the new to the club and they've obviously got, got a few players from the Ipswich Bulls team that won the comp last year, uh, a few ex-Pride players. But um, we knew we knew it was going to be a physical battle. Uh, we knew how we've watched their games, we've watched how they play. Um, we watched the South game. We obviously knew Alira come in and she is just so dangerous. And we, we set up how we thought we should have. And, um, yeah, we... Capitalised on our on our set pieces, which we, which we work hard on, and we got got those two goals, got the three points. And you must be wrapped that you played them last weekend rather than <laughs> this weekend. Of course, Olympic <laughs> announced during the week that they've signed Rosie Sutton and Melbourne Victory Premiership winning captain Angela Beard. Yeah, mate, they're not messing around now, are they? So, um, no, they're happy happy we got them done last week. That's for sure. <laughs> The fact that they have signed those two players, does that mean that there's uh, the potential for two uh, Olympic squad members to be unsettled and be looking elsewhere? Uh, you would think. Um, you know, I know they've got quite a quite a depth at full back there. So, you know, I can imagine Angie's not coming off the bench. So, <laughs> um, 
yeah, no, it'd be very interesting. It'd be, be a tough one to juggle, that's for sure. All right. Let's have a look at this weekend's fixtures. So Friday night, the Lions are taking on the gap. Southwest Queensland Thunder are playing Sunshine Coast Wanderers. That is the longest distance between two clubs. <laughs> Uh, Mackay excluded in the men's. Virginia United are uh, hosting Brisbane City. QAS taking on Mitchelton. Logan Lightning up against Olympic. That should be an interesting one. Penny Power up against Morton Bay United. That's a local derby. Western Pride up against Easts and Souths taking on Capalabar. And GCU have the bye. Corey, I might throw this back to you. The game against the Thunder, travelling up the hill to Clive Berghofer. Would you take a van? Would you take 10 cars? Uh, I think um, I think a few of them are carpooling up, but you know, it's a bit of a trip. So the main thing for us is just making sure we go there and get three points. Is there a sense of excitement about uh, about travelling to Toowoomba? I mean, Clive Berghoff is a, one of the best stadiums going around. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, some of the girls have you know a lot of the girls that we've got in the team have played in NPL before, so they've all been able to play there and play in that stadium, and it's real nice, you know. So. I think there's a you know there's excitement for that. Obviously, the travel's a bit tough, but um, unfortunately, we drew the short straw with having to travel to them instead of the other way around. But you know, pitch will be good. Um, yeah, but we're looking forward to it anyway. Yeah, good stuff. And uh, Trent taking on Eastern Suburbs. That's uh, what, a, a match that could go either way. Yeah, no, it's going to be an interesting one. East have had a bit of a you know. Uh, strange start to the season, but mate, you know, Zoe Lambie, Georgie Amos, um, they got some, that's some Lauren, Lauren Askin, got lots of attacking players there that can hurt you if you're not ready. So, mate, we uh, had a really good session tonight. We prepped for what we want to try and execute. So, you know, hopefully we can go out there and get it done. Of course, Decent Suburbs have a new coach with uh, assistant Joe DeSavia uh, taking over from Michael Cook. Uh, so, Yes, you're up against a, a new coaching challenge as well. Yeah, that's right. And, um, you know, obviously, Michael Michael's a good coach. You know, he's, he's won things. And obviously, there's been something there and they've decided to go their separate ways. So, you know, the new manager bounce as it is could really you know, push them to start getting some points and really get back up where they should belong. You know, I, I had them top six all, all year at the start of the season. So, you know, it'll be an interesting game. Kath and Kelly, I realise that you're still out there. Just checking on you now, making sure that your, your faces haven't gone blue. No, we froze no. to death. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, do, do you two take an interest in the MPLW? Does, does... Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. Were at the, uh, we were at the Morton Bay Mitchy game last Friday night. We were watching that, so that was quite an, um, an entertaining 90 minutes of football, wasn't it? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. What would you make of the teams? Um, I was blown away, actually. I said to Kath this week by Morton Bay, like I, I thought they were superb. Their movement and passing of the ball is just spot on. Um, they look like a very, very dangerous team this season. Um, I will be surprised if they finish outside of the top four. Um, I, I, I just thought they were they were a really great team to watch play football. Hmm. Nice input there, Kath. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, look, I think, um, like, to be honest with you, I think, uh, obviously, there's a lot going on in the NPL this year. Um, with the, I think that's evident with the, with the, uh, I guess, the ladder and the way in which it is. Um, I Like, you know, Mitchelton, I think they have a lot of younger players this year. Um, they have, you know, a new coach. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, and I don't necessarily think that their results from this first part of this this uh, this season necessarily reflect their ability. Um, and I think, you know, that's vice versa with with uh, many other clubs that are sort of sitting middle of the table at the moment. I think there's a lot, a lot been a lot of surprises, um, and I think there's many more to come. For sure, I think it's going to be a very uh, it's going to be very tight in that middle eight, finishing that top eight. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, some clubs I feel have probably have a little have had a maybe a little bit of an easier run to start with, um, and now moving into harder games. Um, and then some other clubs I believe have probably played harder games and are moving into maybe a sort of middle uh, that middle to easier type of games, I guess. I was just thinking before it's it's a recurring theme tonight. All all three 
in a panelist that we're for, the panelists that we have tonight, you've all had to start from scratch this season and you're not the only ones as well, are you? I mean, just having a look at the ladder in front of me, the Gap, Virginia United, Mitchelton, Logan Lightning got decimated and have had to start again. Peninsula Power had to start again. MBU, of course. Um, the struggle is real out there. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. And, and the thing is as well... Um... You know, we, we can increase the size of competitions, but that's pointless if we don't have uh, the players out there to fill the teams for those competitions, which I think has been a little bit of a battle this season, um, is trying to ensure that we have players to come in and actually fill these positions within teams. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's probably posed a little bit of an issue for a few clubs around this year. Mm. All right. Ladies, I'm not going to let you go home and, and get warm. Thank you very much for your time this evening. No worries. And uh, hopefully, you we'll have you on, hopefully we'll have you on in future weeks. For yeah, sure. For Thanks, sure. guys. Thanks. See Thanks, you. Guys. All right. Trent and Corey, we're not done with you two yet. But before we wrap up the show, I just want to ask you questions about this, the top eight, bottom eight in this MPLW. What are your thoughts on it? Given that the your two clubs are sort of going to be in that area around that, well, hope, well, possibly within that seventh to 12th position on the ladder. Would you rather come eighth? Would you prefer to come ninth and, and win the, the, the lower half of the league? How do you see it, Trent? Um, mate, I, I'm not, not going to beat around the bush. We want to be in the NPL next year. That's, that's where we want to be. So, you know, um, eight's a minimum. That's, it's, it, I, you know, we could have, you know, we've rebuilt a team and stuff like that. But if we don't finish eight this year, we've failed what we want to achieve. So, you know, eight or higher. You know, that's, that's the way it is. And I think if, I think all clubs are thinking like that. And it's that pack that it's going to be a, it's going to be a rapid fire finish. That's for sure. Because everyone's sort of sitting around there and, like Cass said, some people have had easy runs, some people have had hard runs. It's all going to even itself out really soon. But, um, yeah, eight, eight's a minimum. That's all there is to it. You're currently in sixth place. Corey, you're in ninth, just one point adrift. Uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think going forward for the comp, it's good. Um, obviously, they want to make sure that that top, top group's really competitive and obviously the bottom group as well. Um, but I mean, for for us, we said straight away we want you know top six to be sure to you know take any doubt or question out of it. Um, I think we are probably one of those teams that may have had a tougher start, um, just obviously having the likes of uh, Lions and and Gold Coast as well. Um, so you know we've still got some tough games going up. As Trent said earlier, like there's no easy games in this competition at all. Every single team in this comp has players that can hurt you if you don't show up. Um, so that's a big thing. Uh, but, you know, I think if we can start to go on a bit of a run now and get the points up there, then, you know, the aim is top six for sure. Corey, I'll ask you a similar question that I asked Trent before. Um, the, and now it has slipped my brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see. I was thinking about Trent and the fact that he's got to do some line marking after this show and it's uh, it's brilliant. <laughs> no, nah, don't stress about me. My, my <laughs> wife's currently running laps, so it's fine. Oh, very good. Very good. All right. With um, Given that your situation there, Trent, uh, sorry, uh, Corey, oh, my goodness, my question has completely gone. We might just have to let that slide and, and ask it in the future. <laughs> it, It'll come back to you later, mate. <laughs> it will. As soon as we turn the cameras off, it'll come yeah. back to me. We might leave it there, guys. Thank you so much for your time this evening. And uh, good luck with the rest of the competition. And it's it's so encouraging to, to see both both of your teams doing so well this early. Cheers, mate. And looking no, forward no, to the thank match. You. Thank you for having us. And looking forward to the match against you too in, uh, in two weeks' time. Should be interesting. Yeah, be a good one. Good stuff. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank yeah. you very much for tuning in this evening. This has been the Village Law SEQFC preview show. We will see you next week.